Hi, Chris Souter here with MLC CAD Systems. I'm going to show you how to set up and configure some of the great features in SOLIDWORKS PDM 2023. Let's start off in the administration tool. Now, most of us are familiar with the automatic login to the user side of PDM and how much time that can save us on a daily basis. Now, in SOLIDWORKS PDM 2023, automatic login can be configured for the administration tool also. For servers, can be removed from the execution list of tasks, making it easier than ever to clean up old host workstations that are no longer needed. Restoring deleted users is simple. A new menu option can be found in, by right-clicking on users, and you can restore any deleted user by clicking a checkbox next to their name. Refuse login can be quickly added to multiple users. Just open the users and a checkbox is available next to each user. Permissions added at the group level used to be a challenge to track down. Now, a tooltip next to the group icon shows us what group permissions are inherited from, and these can be pinned in place for easy comparison. Tracking who has been retrieving files from PDM is now simple. A new get log can be enabled to ensure traceability of document retrieval from the vault. And finally, one of my favorites is the ability to notify the last state modifier for a delayed in state notification. Another one of my favorites is that SOLIDWORKS PDM 2023 lets administrators customize the templates for automatic notifications for a vault. This helps display information that's more relevant to the user and we can customize notification templates for the following file operations. Added, changed state, checked in, checked out and delayed in state. You can edit the subject and body of a template in HTML format and use variables in the notification message. To do this, simply open up the notification template and switch to the custom mode. At any time, you can preview to see what the notification template is going to look like. To give you an idea of how simple this is, I'll make a couple of modifications. and then we'll preview it to see what the changes look like. If anything goes wrong, don't worry. A simple reset will put everything back where it belongs. For the next section of this tutorial, I'd like to focus on the data card functionality and quickly show you how some of these are configured in 2023. One of the nice things about 2023 was the ability to copy and paste data from one cell of a data card into another cell. Now, the good news here is that this is just out the box functionality. There, there is nothing that needs to be configured for this to work. So as soon as you upgrade to 2023, you're going to have the ability to do that kind of uh, copy and paste between data card fields. We also added tooltips to our data card. And then we added the ability to link user data to buttons. And uh, we can pull any user data from full name, initials, user data, that kind of thing. In the past, we only had the ability to select the login name but as you can see now we have all properties now i'll use this part file here and as you can see i don't have a button on this one and i have no tooltip so let's go and take a look at how these are configured when you get to your card editor you simply select a field and you'll see in the properties on the right hand side we now have a tooltip title and a tooltip body and both of these fields are used to display the tooltip on the data card. So let's go ahead and add a title first of all. And then let's add our body.
and then we'll save our data card. And let's go ahead and take a look at this in action. So we'll go back to our user interface. I'm just going to do a quick refresh here. Now, when we hover over that field, there is our tooltip that we just added in the data card editor. Next, we need that button on there so that we can select our project manager. So returning back to the data card, our next job is to put a button on here. So we'll go ahead and do that. Let's give the button a caption so the name looks good. Okay, so far so good. And then we're going to tell it what command type this is, and it's going to be find user. There is a dialog box caption here. So again, it's a tooltip pops up to the user. Okay, and then we need to tell it what variable we want this to go into. So we'll select project manager. And then from here, we select what type of user data value we want to go into that field. So I'm going to choose the option for full name. And then let's go ahead and save that. And let's take a look at that functionality. So returning back now to the user interface, we'll just do one more refresh. You can see we have a button. If we click on that button, it brings up the user info. Here I'm going to search for JSON. It finds the user. We'll go ahead and select that user. And you can see now it puts the name of that user into that field. We'll go ahead and save that. And then one last thing I want to show you here is for the administrators. If you use control logic in your data card, there is now an icon that will show up in the card editor. And this just displays the fields that have control logic assigned to them. To edit the fields, you can quickly see where they are and then simply apply the control logic by accessing the uh, control logic. As you can see, in SolidWorks PDM 2023, we have some great tools to enhance both the user experience as well as making life easier for us administrators.